Hello, everybody. So, as you can probably see, we are in a new location this, this again. Is, this is our fabulous uh, episode. Fabulous yes. And I bet you can't guess episode. where we are. We've been here before, but it doesn't look like it. We are in Elise's house. We're in Robinsdale. Yes. Robinsdale, Minnesota. In her uh, recording studio. Yes. yes. The, the Otherwise known as the basement. Yeah. <laughs> Especially installed. Soundproof walls. Oh, yeah. you know. Um, but anyways, uh welcome to the Live and Learn Podcast. If you look for the good moments and learn from the bad, you're in the right place. This is the Live and Learn Podcast. All right, so today we have very, 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 very special guest with us he all the way from across episode. the he, sea. It, he's amazing. The ocean, really excuse is. me. To, across to, the big pond. Mm. To take the time out of his busy schedule. Yeah. To come in yeah. for this episode is mm-hmm. huge. Yeah. And we can't thank you enough. Bill Dorsey. Hey, yes. uh, truth be told, <clears throat> I've been begging <laughs> since I arrived yep. to be on this podcast. Yeah. There was a lot of pressure on, yeah. on this on this episode. The, what pressure? The higher ups up the ladder a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. What's where's the ladder? Like Tell me. Tell me where the ladder about, is. You know, Do the, we want the foreigners yeah. here from Sweden? <laughs> the <laughs> Swedish bloke, really? <laughs> Especially oh, with boy. with all of the fire around like socialism. Uh, and, uh, hey, that they whole... want well, we and they're trying to join. join are you NATO? trying to join NATO yeah. now? Yeah. Yep. Oh, yep. Boy. About damn time when Turkey when Russia's that. walk walking on their doors, they finally want in on NATO. Oh boy, That's, <laughs> that is, oh, well, you could go way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, Bill. Um. Again, thanks for being here with us. Um. No pressure. Uh, we're just uh, having a chat with some friends. So, you know, it's relaxed. I, we're chill. I we're should doing our my, thing. Uh, uh, uh-huh. CV, as we say. Yeah, the here. background a little bit. Now, yeah. the, I grew up with John from day one, and John mm-hmm. is. Uh, and we've had, we've had my father on the podcast no. before. So, mm-hmm. any, long, no. any listeners, if this is a recurring mm. year. It's chronological. And John is the guy in my life, and I don't want to get teary-eyed, but <laughs> if if there's a war, uh-huh. I want that fucker on my back because I would, I mean, that guy just does not say yeah. die. Uh-uh. Yeah, so that's my background, and I, yeah. I've known Will since, no, since the beginning. Since I was born, probably. Yeah. I mean, probably. He doesn't whatever. know. Who knows? <laughs> I taught him English. Yep. <laughs> Is that a fact? No. I just knew Norse beforehand. No. Oh, all right. Calm, calm down now. Calm down. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, tell us, tell us about um, the the old glory days, the college days with a uh, Brady Benson. Oh, you, you want an actual story? Uh, yeah. Why not? Yes. Paint us a picture. Uh, no wait. No wait. Let. I'll do so. I'll do one up, and I will define a real man mm. after oh, being up yeah. all night, yeah. after peeing from the bar and being asked to step down. You know, just the worst kind of shit you can do. Bill, will life. you twist that little like thingy that's right there, the little like yep, and then just pull it out a little bit? Oh, you want this? No, no. Twist the little like knob that's Here? right there. Yep, and it's gonna come out. You want it further? Huh? Twist it. Yep. There. And then pull it out. Yep, yep, yep. Are, are we doing the Joe Rogan? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I am so... Are, my right? whole life, I've waited for that. <laughs> Could you just hold that a look? You know, it just makes get your voice... Get to the right <laughs> spot. Uh, the word is directional? Or, mm-hmm. what? No, not directional. Dynamic. No, but there was about proximity. Oh, prox- proximity. proximity, yes, yes. <clears throat> Listen, the night after, mm-hmm. the kind of night when you wake up and you're still so drunk. We've all had that. You night. never went to sleep. Yeah. And so I do that because John's shaking me saying, Bill, Bill, we got to go home. And we had some commitment. Yeah. So we we're going to drive from Stout, uh, so Wisconsin, to mm-hmm. Minneapolis, Minnesota. And you know, I was just whatever, you know, just hammered. Uh-huh. Just, uh, you know, that can, you can. That double vision. Anyways, we get in the car and we're driving. Uh, not we're, John's driving. Mm-hmm. And we hit a real Minnesota storm where it was sheer ice. 
There was nothing but ice on the highway and just a shitload of snow. And so it was yeah. a double lane highway, huge, deep ravine in the middle, and then, you know, oncoming traffic. So we're driving along and all of a sudden we're doing this and John looks at me and he goes, I'm not steering. <laughs> Wait, oh, <laughs> and, no. And all the cars around us, it happened just like, you know, that just instant moment and everyone's going in the ditch. And this, it's it's like we have to be home. It's Sunday morning, like at six thirty seven, and just like fuck. That's like a two hour drive. Right? Oh, and, and just we're talking, we're on a major. High, there are no stops. <laughs> so, anyways, we're spinning out, and and then we go down in the ditch, and on the way down, John shifts from drive to reverse to pick up speed to go up the other side, <sighs> puts it, it just. That fucker was going to get out of the ditch. <laughs> and it was just like, yeah. And we get almost up there and he just shoves it back in reverse and you go up the other side. And, oh, and no. we, this, this, we, we just fucking manhandles that car out of the highway and now we're just spinning. Yeah. And now there's a pickup truck coming. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, Are you serious? Yeah. Right now? Like 500 meters, no, 300 meters. And we're just, and I'm just quite, John, yeah. John. And he goes, there's nothing I can do. <laughs> and we just like, at the last minute, he fucking straightens that car after having gotten us out of the ditch. And I'm in that right seat just going, you are the son of God. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hammered that's the crazy <laughs> shit back then nowadays you don't do that yeah back then it was just <laughs> fucking you know can you drive just meant can you actually get us onto the road yeah. is that a possible thing <laughs> or should i do it it's that kind of fucking who's, crazy who's the best for it right now <sighs> but i'm telling you man here teddy we'll switch yeah. i'll take i'll take yeah. the hmm? that's that's will's father Yep, I did want kombucha. Yeah, my though. best friend. Uh, okay. Why would I ask for it? Because you didn't guess what was in it. <laughs> that was the big prize. <laughs> I did. You asked filter, and I said no. I, I said, "Are there chunks?" I asked a question. <laughs> yeah, we, and then it the got question. bad. So we just left it there, pre-podcast material. It's all, it's all. Yeah. But yeah, no, you know, honestly, that, that doesn't surprise me in the least bit because um, John or Brady, as we know yeah. him, because he also pulled a similar move to Cooper by going uh, as his middle name, yeah. um, is uh, I feel like he's just, he's a, um, uh, what's the term? A sleeping dog, if you will. You know, he, he used he's to get into some trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are you talking about Will? No, about Brady. Okay, okay. No, both of them. Oh well, he, he's Both's a he's called. a different like now, kid. This guy, I mean, you got to even go d lower than that. Uh -huh. This guy is just like the chilling grasshopper. You know what? In the sun, and that's where you'd be wrong. Yeah, and that's where you'd be absolutely wrong. <laughs> Tell me more. Demons come out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look. So you know. For the most part, Cooper is a very, you are correct. He is usually a very like chill, relaxed kid. Yeah. He doesn't get into too much trouble. You know, he speaks his mind and he, he tries so to be the, um, the glue amongst uh, a lot of people, you know, but give this kid any type of alcohol and he <laughs> is an entirely <laughs> different person no. he doesn't care about anyone he is mad disrespectful he what? does what he wants oh he's pushing people respectful. around literally respectful. there was one time in college where we were at his house and we were with his roommates one of his roommates noah uh was just like sitting on a couch you know chill in mind is his business and cooper comes out of the kitchen you know with like a sandwich or something and fucking like yells at noah for something and then chucks the sandwich at him and no, was no, like no. three it, times my size. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't because of that. It wasn't because of some petty shit like that. No, I said no, he just yelled at him and what? chucked a sandwich. No there does not to be context ROTC there. See, at the time, he's trying to go to bed. It's two in the morning. <laughs> he's got like this five, fucker is making up. so much noise <laughs> in the house that like no one can sleep. I was like frying a pizza. No, no one. No one comes out of his room and he's like, dude, I really need to go to bed. I need to wake up in three hours. Like, can you please like shut? <laughs> Arpon, I swear to bit. fucking god, please <laughs> get the mic anger. closer to your mouth. <laughs> He's like, yo, I no fuck you. 
chucks the sandwich that he just made at him, a whole sandwich, and just tackles him. Both of them under their underwear. Oh, yeah, he tackled the shit out of him. That yeah. Was like, he, Noah's then no, Noah, Noah's like two times his size, so like he, Noah just sits on him, and he's like, are you done yet? <laughs> Oh man, that is just too much. I, I, I honestly, God, I can't even imagine that side. Except mm -hmm. if I remember you as a little kid, you know, just Gotta give it your all. <laughs> memories just come back, and there's no difference between <laughs> my memories of John and his brothers and Will and his brother. I mean, yeah. just the brutality of the play was just simply <laughs> fucking I mind boggling. Beat the crap out of me as a kid. Like, that I was. was bullied every day how did it feel when you got bigger than him i felt pretty damn good <laughs> i'll say that <laughs> taller now literally every every time my brother and i would work together a lot we do like painting jobs or like landscaping jobs can, can you not do that give me a second I'm gonna hold <laughs> oh this. my fucking god <laughs> i was just going like are we are we being disconnected i don't want to yeah, say we, we sure aren't what is he there doing He's doing the microphone dance. Okay. Now, now it will be in my mouth. Dude, you I'm are suffering. Welcome. You are Elvis Presley right now. <laughs> and this Hello. this isn't a there, one off thing. That nice Bill. deep voice there, there. We're back. This isn't a one off Bill. This, <laughs> this is normal. <laughs> this is normal. Good. Welcome. Hey. Regular viewers now. <laughs> Jesus we have it with Christ. us for a while. <laughs> you know. Yeah, they know. That was like at least 30 seconds, maybe 40 <laughs> seconds of just mm -hmm. shit mm -hmm. yes sound. He doesn't have the ears. You're welcome. No, he doesn't. Just going like, ah! <laughs> That's where we, where you, you see the statistics? There's like a You see the time and the viewership? And that's the point where it's Look, look. Logarithmic. I, I can only fix so much in post. <laughs> Just uh, mute the whole thing. It works out. We thrive it, off it of does our not. analytics. We yeah. wouldn't. The, this show wouldn't be possible with without RSS and Google mm -hmm. Analytics. Uh -huh. and okay, I I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Could, could you just speak a little bit closer to the microphone? <laughs> 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 this feels so good. Is this right better? now, Is this 25 million viewers. Me, Joe Rogan. Okay, I just asked my guest to speak a little closer to the mic. <laughs> Please. I feel like you could pull off a Joe Rogan impersonation. You know, like, it, we're, we're damn near there. You know, like, lose the glasses. Like, you know. A little bit more scruff. We got, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And if I flex, yeah, yeah. if I flex my muscles and say, I only eat healthy foods, mm. mostly meat. <laughs> mostly red meat. Mostly red meat. That I've hunted. Yeah, you, oh, dude, you know what? No, no, okay. So, um, myself, uh, we were just talking about um, steroid use, uh, just uh, while we were uh, off uh, screen before we started the podcast. And now that we're talking about, you know, um, meat eating, I think it's uh, really interesting to bring up, and I think you might know who I'm gonna bring up. Um, you guys heard of a uh, liver king? I have no clue. No, no. no. so he's like, he's literally just this, like roided out caveman looking guy who preaches on like the internet about how we have to go back to our ancestral roots oh. and eat raw meat to get gains <laughs> i think like the whole thing is For like some we reason. adapted to getting more nutrition by cooking our food right? uh, uh, <laughs> for some reason i vision the What's what's his name? Liver King. No, 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 not Liver King, but like that one. Oh wait, it is the dude who gives motivational Liver speeches. Liver King. <laughs> he actually gives <laughs> motivational speeches. This is you, Bill. You're oh, is it, isn't the man. one like? That's all you have to do today. Is the one was is it? And what he is what? Looks like a superhero, man. No, dude. And the thing is, like, he's always preaching, like, oh, you know, I don't use steroids. My body is completely natural. I get this big because I I'm using nutrients like. from, like, uh, the, the animals that I eat. I only I eat know. big, tough <laughs> animals. Like, literally. So, like, I was, like, listening to the um, uh, Jake's, or no, Logan Paul's podcast a while back, and they had him as a guest. And, dude, he was pe preaching, like, the 
wildest thing. He was talking about how um, the reason why he eats like um, animals and like specifically like, animal intestines, like liver, <laughs> like um, raw. Yeah, raw. He eats them. He raw dogs those bitches. God damn. Um, the reason why is because he Getting said dirty with that him. it has been scientifically proven that if you eat a part of an animal, then those nutrients will be. Um, uh, absorbed in the specific organ in okay. your body. Yeah, just, just, just think of that. You uh -huh. know, let's kill the lions uh -huh. and the rhinos and yep. the elephants, uh -huh. and just rub that shit down into powder, mm -hmm. and you know, maybe we'll get a heart on it. Into, uh, the <laughs> of There's no difference, man. It's well, no, like, exactly. And which uh, was why I was like, wow, he is like, he is either like legitimate, legitimately yeah, insane. Yeah. Or he is trying to sell his supplements so hard because he does sell supplements. He sells like supplements that have like the vitamins from, you know, organs, <laughs> blah, 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 you know, like, and that's but the thing. Who, who's, who's he killing to get those vitamins from the organs, huh? <laughs> Huh? Animals. He's like, he <laughs> says like, oh, you know, I eat, you know, uh, elk liver. I eat like, um, I don't, I don't know other, like, yeah. think of like big animals. I eat, um, bear. fucking, yeah, bear. I eat cow balls and he does eat balls. He has said he eats balls. Well, you absorb it into your balls. Okay? <laughs> well, it's, it's not terribly like uncommon for people to eat balls. No, sure. But like, it's just weird. Like why, like just why? And it's just like, it's raw. It's all raw. It's all raw. Jeez. Uh, you, you really have to pitch, you know, to that perfect audience. And he's mm -hmm. basically speaking to everyone because everyone is like, well, how, how, how many, how many, how many followers shit. does he have? A lot. Uh, but if, if you imagine it this way, yeah. you know, he's going to sell this little pill. Yeah. And everyone in the audience he is He has 1.5 million. You know, Jesus. You're, you're, everyone's bald. Everyone's listening, mm -hmm. and he says, "You rub down this elephant tusk mm -hmm. like this, and you mm -hmm. eat the powder and yeah. whatever." <laughs> you rub down like everyone. That's yeah. a thousand people in that audience that are saying, "Fuck, I'm buying that pill," yeah. and they're gonna tell a thousand friends, mm -hmm. "I got this pill," and so yeah. Well, no, it's exactly how you say he's uh, he's preaching a desirable lifestyle. It's like he's still, like trying to like preach to the you know the macho man that's like within every guy. Um, I think he was even like. Uh, on the podcast he was even talking about how like you know if you follow the ancestral diet which is like the diet that he promotes you know you'll you'll uh, bring out you know that primal man that's hiding within you you know this alpha male that can achieve so much you know all, all this like tr like drivel that's like you know has a demographic there is definitely a certain like group of guys that is listening and being like oh, yeah you know what I'm i listening. haven't been in touch with my primal self in forever <laughs> yeah, i need not, to get in line I'm you know not. get me some of these supplements <laughs> i need to change my life right I'm now like i need to express my anger as yeah, i feel it exactly you know i, I need to go help hunt more elk uh i don't know man <laughs> i'm gonna eat a fish raw pull it right out of the mm -hmm. river and just yeah, exactly all of that all of that <laughs> No, dude, it's it's too much, uh, man. Like, it's it's too much. These guys I'll gotta calm take. down. That's a, no. That's a, I mean, he's got his demographic. He's got his. He does, his but it's but he's image. lying yeah. though. Is the thing like if you uh, guys saw? Uh, yeah, gotta draw the line there. Really? You think you think he looks like that way naturally? Oh hell no. I'm just saying that food has some natural oh, stuff. Oh in yeah, it. yeah. You know, it, all, no, just, and agreed, agreed. I was being funny. Uh, the food he eats does have natural shit yeah. in it that's good for you. That's <laughs> yeah. all I was yeah. going to give him. No, and, that's, and I agree with you. Yeah. Like, uh, the stuff he's saying, it's all true. And it's like, you know, I, and I get that. Um, but the fact that he's saying the way he got, the way he looks, <laughs> is entirely by this ancestral diet that he's put together <laughs> is an absolute lie. And he refuses to yeah. help people he's using performance-enhancing drugs yeah. like steroids. Um, or just like whatever like PEDs that he can get a hold of because he is so like one thing about fitness is um, you can't be big and shredded. Those are two things you can't have. You can either be big or you can be shredded. Oh. Uh, when you're shredded, you're really small. When you're big, and you're like, on a diet. And you're on a diet. Yeah. No carbs, mm -hmm. fucking barely water. Exactly. Just pure protein powder and uh, enough liquid. To get it down. Exactly. Because like when you when you're that small, when your body has that lack of like fat in it, you it literally cannot maintain that amount of mass <laughs> no. unless you're using steroids. Have you have you seen like the body uh 
like what's it called uh-huh. uh, body fat calculations for uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, no. I'm sure it's really low. I don't know. I mean, it just it is insanely off low. The charts. What is yeah. he at? Like four or something? He, I think he's at like a five. Oh, okay, or like five point something. Do you guys know that's like in every category? The response time he has when they show him dribbling the ball, yeah. it's like double everyone else. I know. Yeah. It, the way his eyes move, simply incredible. I mean, just the guy is just superhuman in all the mm-hmm. categories, and he fucking trains all the yeah. time. Mm-hmm. I admire that guy. Yeah. No, like, there's there's a reason he's where he is. It's but, weird looking at his physique because like it's just skin and then muscle. There's no fat in between, yeah. nor age. If it's yeah. just like <laughs> this guy just stopped Does at twenty four, <laughs> yeah. which is wild considering the sport that soccer is. Oh. You know, because um, like look at look at a sport like basketball where like you're doing a bunch of like running around and jumping and such. <laughs> Those guys will be like get injured and like be out of the game by like twenty five. Oh. You know, like some are very fortunate. For example, like LeBron, who I think I want to say LeBron's like pushing forty at this point. <laughs> And like, still in the game when he probably should have retired uh, a while do, ago. Do, 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 do. Nah, <laughs> he's not just still in the game. I yeah. hate when people. Okay, say okay, that. no, no, okay, okay, fair. He is dominating the game. Thank would, you. would you like that? There you go. <laughs> and, and I agree with that. He is How like it is. It is wild. For damn near like twenty years. years. Yeah. Ah, maybe we want to say the full. I mean, that guy's been a force for longer than most people play from high school on. Hmm. I mean. He's he's old, yeah. and he's. It's not like you'd say, "Dude, you are a pussy." Mm. I mean, fuck yeah, you would just plant you in yeah. the floor. Mm. And he's like, well, I, I can't say enough. I mean, the guy mm-hmm. is so fucking smart, yeah. And uh, he's a, and he's fuck, he's big man. I Very. just and and the, it's just that he has that double <laughs> though. He's big, yeah, and he's fucking cut. Then there's no fat. Mm -hmm. I mean, how the hell do you do that when you weigh like 240, whatever he weighs? Well, it's just the height too, though. He's just he's just a giant man with like a huge frame. You know, he's got like a photographic memory. Have you really? You guys have not seen this? The sportscasters play this with him all the time. Let's say uh 1984, fourth quarter, you know, uh Time is X on the clock. What's happening? Mm-hmm. And he'll tell you literally where every referee was on the court. Yeah. Every player yeah. who was walking on, who was walking off, and where the ball was coming in micro detail. Every Jeez. single he has, he constantly does mm-hmm. this. That's why he's so fucking cool to play because he is just studying this stuff 24 mm-hmm. 7. Which there. I think is like super admirable with those like super athletes like yeah. that. I feel like the guys who are like really at the top of like their fields, they're always like that. They're always like studying like older games. They're studying, you know, the games of like other people that they're like watching, checking out, seeing how a specific team like plays, you know, what kind of like formations they'll run. You know, yeah. like when you're when you're really dedicated to the game. You take it to a whole different level. That's why a lot of people like hate Kobe, specifically players. Players hate Kobe because he was like that. Jordan, yeah, and, Jordan and as well. Who is the goat of maybe all sports? Tom mm-hmm. Brady, mm-hmm. a skinny white kid that ran slow. <laughs> he was, looked weak. <laughs> Fuck, man, he was drafted last of all. Yeah, <laughs> the last fucker and. Oh, really? He just had the lowest. I think he's still. I don't think anyone's had a lower mm-hmm. the lower that like pre tryout test. He yeah. just he just sucked. And from the day one, he goes to the owner, you mm-hmm. know, and just says, "I'm the greatest investment your team or your company <laughs> will ever have made." <laughs> and he goes, "Wow." <laughs> he didn't say, "Do you know who I am?" Yeah, just, I am. Yeah, yeah. and oh. <laughs> can't say enough. But all those guys, there is yeah. something hyper, almost nasty focus. Uh-huh. Hard to be a friend of that. Uh-huh. Agreed. Oh. You know? Oh, but I love Kobe. Mm. Can we just talk Kobe right no, now? No, dude, uh, like, Kobe was a force to be reckoned with oh. in his heyday, like, when he was playing, especially, like, um, what, like when, when were um, him and uh, Shaq on the Lakers together? That was... Uh, oh, it was his last two years, wasn't it? Was it? Shaq retired after that, and then... I think Kobe. What year was that though? Was that like is that early two thousands? 
Oh no, God! No, 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 no. We're getting out there in the two thousands. I mean, I don't know, fourteen, fourteen. Yeah. I, I don't want to swear on it, mm. but <laughs> somewhere around there. But like that specific time period is probably my favorite, just because we got to like see that synergy between like just like these two absolute monsters. Hey, Jordan on Shaq, and then Shaq transitions, and then Kobe. But Kobe's different than every mm -hmm. single person before him because oh. the guy just got out of puberty. I mean, he was fucking mm -hmm. 18 or something, and he's pro. You know, everyone does like one year of college. Yeah. That guy, he was hyper famous <laughs> from the start. Are oh, you yeah. going to be the next Jordan? I mean, from. <laughs> Oh, so that makes him special, and I. You know. So you know, okay, but doesn't that like absolutely suck though? Because like, like one thing is like just also just like winning the genetic lottery to yeah. just like have all these things like innate. Like we have to like consider the amount of like talent that is just like born with, and I'm just like wow, absolutely whack. Why can't I get some of that? Like why why can't I get a few more like skill points in this area? And, and, and the thing is, you know, the beauty of that level, uh -huh. it's so far, far beyond what we can even imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we're thinking, you know, okay, that guy's like a hundred times better than us. And, mm -hmm. and, and we're going to meet him there. Mm -hmm. It's like 10,000 times better. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are like unique human beings. Mm -hmm. Just as good as you can get. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and then it's like, I think it's also incredible just to see a lot of that talent in the Olympics for one. <sighs> Because then we have like all the literal best in the world coming together in one place to see who's the best in the world. <laughs> Can you imagine just this? If one country says, I'm not coming, mm -hmm. we're going to boycott. What that does to those athletes, that's an eight year mm -hmm. gap to the next Olympics if they were going to try to be their best. Yeah. yeah. Man, the politics and what you're saying, I mean, just the best of the best. Come on. Let's do it. Have it out mm -hmm. right here and now. That is just a beautiful thing. And we should never take away from that. I, it's just wrong. Agreed. Uh, and then we can talk doping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, since we're, we're so into that. Russia um, question mark? <laughs> Russia question mark. Oh, boy. Don't get us in trouble now. Oh, man. Um, it's crazy to think that they had a state-sponsored doping program. Yeah. I Did mean, they? that yes. everyone knew about yes. and participated in. Yes. Yep. I mean, you've all seen Icarus, you know, that documentary. I've not seen Icarus. Oh, my God. It is literally how Lance Armstrong could do it, how all these mm. people could do it. This is the highest doctor in the whole Russian fucking medical world of doping. Yeah. <laughs> and he just gets on this American documentary where this biker from California says, oh, I wonder if I could experiment and see if doping helped. So the top, and this is right when, like, you know, Russia is, is just, they were hosting the fucking Olympics, you know, in, mm -hmm. and it just turns out it's just, it's so corrupt. It's like the children are doing it. Yeah, and not, not like doing the doping, but we're going to run the vial from here to there. It's just yep. everything, secret doors, everything, pure doping. And yeah, it's a great, no, Icarus, it's mm -hmm. a great documentary on netflix i believe yeah worth every second <laughs> yeah, i'll have to check it out okay so bill since we're we're on the the topic of sports so much were, were you playing anything back in your day um nothing well but i'm gonna be straight with you here. yeah it's like i had a certain charm with the coaches uh -huh. and so they'd fucking play me you know, and just, but I really didn't have any core athletic ability other mm -hmm. than I wasn't uncoordinated. Mm -hmm. So if you add super average and a certain amount of charm yeah. and suddenly fucking you're playing first base. So see, I think it's absolutely hilarious you say that because um, I'm going to reference a, a music artist that you're probably not familiar with. who goes by the name. Well, his name is Jack Harlow. So he recently dropped an album recently, and a lot of people are saying that it's like super, super mediocre, but like they almost like it 
because he is a person is just such a charming individual. <laughs> he's just like, he's always like super slick with his words he and he's just like a very likable guy. Yes. And then just like, oh, you know, he's so likable. I almost like his novel because it's just like, it's just not amazing. Hey, we're back to Lizard Man now. <laughs> <laughs> Just his charm. <laughs> There's something you can sell. Yeah, because yeah. he's getting off like damn near by his charm. <laughs> I mean, that uh, he has that certain lizard mm -hmm. man charm. Mm -hmm. I can eat, you know, practically bloody shit, mm -hmm. and then tell you that I can condense this into a pill and I can sell it to yeah. you, and you're going to be so much stronger and more mm -hmm. vital. I mean, that it, it has to be some kind of charm. Okay, so my next question, Bill, are you a con man? Oh, I have been asked that since the start. <laughs> oh, I need context for this. Well, con man goes by many different different yeah. names, you know, entrepreneur, yeah. businessman. Yeah. Uh, you don't, don't, so don't try to make it prettier. Charlatan. Bill, are you a con man? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can. It, it, here's the truth. Uh -huh. I have been looking for something to sell, but I can't lie about it mm -hmm. and be happy about myself. And I can't find that thing. And that's a really bizarre thing to say. I mean, it's just like, so right now, in fact, in my life, it's, it's a long story just yeah. this moment, but I'm actually on target on a path to actually develop the best loudspeaker in the world, bar none, no comparisons for an outrageous, you know, price. Talking really? hundred thousand million dollars. Is this like real life pair. right now? Yeah. Yeah. I, I have this, well, wonderful connection mm -hmm. and yeah it, it's it's going to be an amazing thing but it has to do with that perfection or that search for and so you're uh, working on like the development for this project yeah i i can be the perfect salesman uh -huh. which would take away the con man part but yeah i need to actually be able to say this is the actual best thing in the world mm -hmm. and then i'll fucking sell it to everyone mm -hmm. Okay, question. Because I am very big on audio. Um, are these like, what, what kind of speakers are these? Are these like um, studio monitors? Are these like listening monitors? What is the use case for these? Uh, both. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll just say it. I, I just happen to know. You know, mm -hmm. these are the people that are so smart that yeah. you can't imagine. I, I can tell you how smart he is. Yeah. We were driving back. We had been driving from Denmark to Sweden. We're in the middle of the night. We're super tired. And he starts going in on the subject of IQ and then yeah. he talked about Mensa and that, you know, what was our score, you know, and it was like, it was, I was getting to know him kind of thing. So I told him mine and, and then, uh, he goes, yeah, I, I took the test twice and I, and I didn't get a good score mm -hmm. and I'm just going, dude, you don't have to be embarrassed. You know, you are what you are. And he goes, no, Bill, honestly, I, I took the test and uh, I didn't get a score. I'm going, what the fuck are you saying? I, uh -huh. you know, I know how this thing works. And he goes, yeah. So I, I left in anger kind of thing. He just said, okay, I'm not doing this. And he left the test site. Mm -hmm. um, and then he just went on a few years or something. And then just said, no, damn it. I'm going to, I want to do this. Yeah. So he goes, he does it again. And then this time it's a little bit further along, you know, so there's a little bit of electronics. And so mm -hmm. by the end, okay, it was the same thing where Ingvar felt this was just worthless and there's, it, it was just fake. And then I asked him, what the hell, what the hell are you talking about? And he said, they could not find a question to which I did not have the correct answer. Oh, wow. That's Mensa. And you know, IQ, you know, so if you have a 160, which is the max, yeah. you're comparing to 40. Mm -hmm. So this is a drooling idiot that can't feed himself, you know, so <laughs> you can't get higher than 160 because you can't get lower. Yeah. So everyone that's super hyper brilliant is 160. But then there's these super 160s, you know, and that's what this guy is. And <laughs> for some reason, his goal in life is to make the best speaker in the world. Mm -hmm. This guy knows, I mean, he is a professor. I mean, he taught everyone wants him and his core basic interest mm -hmm. i mean he just he shares like no one i know but yeah is to make the best pair of speakers in the world and he's mm -hmm. already got them mm -hmm. uh, what's the brand called it's Inno audio it's swedish i n o uh, and then audio you you won't find it because there's no advertising yeah there's nothing 
nothing. Just a cult following of people who understand. And it's just, it's the most amazing thing. Um, I don't know how we swing back to where we started off on this tangent. Oh, I was asking why you, if you were a con man. Yeah. It, yeah. So the answer to your question is, I think absolutely. Uh-huh. But if I could latch on to something close to truth or best or something like that, mm-hmm. by definition, I would not be because that's yeah. all I'd talk about. Yeah. No, I mean, look, you're only a con man if, like, you're, like, um, uh, deceiving people in yeah, order to yeah. get to a specific end. Grossly benefiting yeah, yourself. Exactly. At the cost of it. But no, if, you, if you're legitimately preaching something that you believe to be, like, excellent, you know, then it's not the case. I, I, I want, it's more subtle than uh-huh. that. I think you really hit it, uh, and I want to say you, I am. In mm-hmm. every single possible way I come mm-hmm. out. <laughs> and it's only something out there which I kind of blindly strive towards that allows for just that sliver that maybe I'm not. Yeah. So yeah. Okay, I got a question for you then. Um, so you, you said you guys already have models out, right? Yeah. Or n- not not out for the public, but made, correct? Oh, no, no, these uh, I don't want to just be like revealing stuff that yes, just tell us all me. of the trade yeah. secrets. No, yeah. hey, look, I'm just asking because <laughs> current I am best, in the yeah, yeah, these are ahead. the best speakers in the whole wide world. They're not even yeah. expensive, they're just uh, dirt cheap. And uh, um, he's it's been a development of the same speaker for 40 years. Mm-hmm. Um, you can measure it in any which way you want, and <clears throat> I'm not just talking about like a flat tonal yeah. response, I'm talking about he knows how the ear preserves. The, pre- uh, perceives things mm-hmm. and how that impacts, you know, the actual physical signal yeah. and then how our upbringing, surroundings, likes and dislikes, mm-hmm. all those kinds of things. He's mm-hmm. just, but he's hard core scientific. The guy just yeah. got it. It's not even fun. I go crazy talking to him because uh-huh. everything is literal. Okay. Cause like, I'm going to, I'm going to pause you really quick. Um, I am like, I'm like mouth, like frothing at the mouth right now because, like, I, I'm like I'm not kidding. I'm a, I'm a very big audio guy, as You're you good. can probably tell. Um, uh, I like um, as a hobby. I work with music, so I do a lot of like uh, mixing and mastering for music myself. And uh, just like you mentioned, there are there are literal like details in sound that like you know you you may not notice it, but like subtly things added on top of each other can just like achieve um just a superb sound like for instance um uh stereo mixing so what uh stereo means is basically um uh your two monitors the left one and the right one and how they correspond to each other to make a full room experience basically as if the person was there as opposed to a mono um uh, audio signal which is just like singular flat uh one level so just like all these things are like very important to creating like really good room filling music that sound good on like um any audio source any headphones in your car uh, these details are all like super super important and significant so you got the connection oh I mean, yeah <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm literally saying uh-huh. and, and the thing is i've listened to wilson audio i've listened yeah. to you know all of these great speakers uh-huh. it, it it's you know especially if you start talking price it's just literally what the perfect speaker would sound like yeah and everything else is simply less you you, you there's no other way to describe it but the, the funniest thing is that i'm not trying to be emotional i'm not trying to mm-hmm. convince you i'm just saying mm-hmm. that just do the measurements yeah, yeah objectively just, look yeah. At the, look and, and what i'm telling you right now is send them to me <laughs> so it's like these two disappeared because we're talking audio man. yes no because I, I, i'm you. no i'm i'm super for real like literally yeah. like um a few months ago like i i i try to achieve a very specific sound which is like you know professional sounding audio because occasionally like that's um, what this show is too exactly i, I get it as professional best. exactly professional i get everything the way that <laughs> i want it to be um and so i'm willing to spend the money in order to achieve oh. that quality like literally a few months ago i literally bought a microphone that costs like 1200 dollars because um i know for a fact and i've tested it that it can achieve a specific sound that just like cuts through music and just like really like gets to your ears that you just, you, you, you really can't skimp when it comes to audio. If you want it to sound good, 
and like sounding good matters because no matter like how good of a, a musician or like a, a singer or like a whatever genre you're in like it will not penetrate to who's listening if that um audio recording is not good here's the curse of us too um you can't hear better uh -huh. anything like you can hear worse <laughs> so we are like spending our lives getting better yeah and it's just fucking you have to like train yourself to even get to the possible point of being able to hear that difference yeah. but worse man you hear mm -hmm. that just a slight yeah. decrease so it's like you know we just struggled our whole lives mm -hmm. to get up to the top and now mm -hmm. it's just like ah! worse is horrible mm -hmm. no like literally it, um people prefer a video that has good audio and like um bad video compared to uh, a video that has good video and bad audio yeah. like that is how important like oh. an audio experience is to people no question about it i mean mm -hmm. it would, hell you know our eyesight developed from our hearing mm -hmm. you know somehow that shit moved forward so hearing is so we don't you know just the fact that the in that mm -hmm. bass sound in a, a ventilation system mm -hmm. or something. I mean, man, we are controlled. Mm -hmm. You know, you can just close your eyes, but you cannot close your ears mm -hmm. if the bass sound. Mm -hmm. or, I mean, either way, there are two ways of interpreting frequencies. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Yeah. yeah. Eyesight and hearing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, everything is a frequency. Mm -hmm. See, that's the total, you know. Rounding it off, mm -hmm. we have to have either separate podcasts, mm -hmm. which would be great. But <laughs> there's, you know, there's a limited audience because we're uh, talking like, <laughs> okay, there's 17 people in the universe. No, oh, no, no, these, this, like, I think it's so important that people learn these the things, ages, though, because, yeah. like, when, like, you listen to, like, your favorite, like, artist or, like, whoever, like, they, they, like, work with a team that, like, works with, like, equipment that's worth, like, millions of dollars or maybe hundreds of uh -huh. thousands of dollars to achieve what you're listening to and like that's crazy like i think like i've been like learning about this stuff like probably since like sophomore year of uh, college and like more and more i learn it's just i think it's just mind-blowing the amount of work that goes into this hey, stuff. listen you're just gonna love this his name is ingbar uh, mom and you know you can translate that as i o so mm -hmm. input output ah, and what ah, is what is his purpose in life uh -huh. it, it's it, it it's so funny because he'll answer it so clearly yeah uh, well the input would be matching exactly the output it's not how it's supposed to sound in your fantasy or anything it's just like this is as close as we can get mm -hmm. sound to come out as a reproduction of a sound that went in yeah and it's a odd goal it really really is because yeah. you know we want to make things better and rounder or more enticing or tighter whatever mm -hmm. you know is popular mm -hmm. zero interest to them they just input output. but there can't be anything else interesting with a speaker mm -hmm. otherwise we're just you know diamond encrusted yeah <laughs> that doesn't do anything it makes for the, the sound. quality better dude. it doesn't at now, all. I wonder, um, is he interested in linguistics? Oh, super interested. Look, when, when like, you have a mind like that, there's about, nothing. What do yeah. we talk about, Ingvar and I? No, no, no. When you talk mm -hmm. about, like, audio, I feel like linguistics is a very big part of that. Because, like, your developmental, like, the way that you take in tones when you're younger, that determines the tones that you can actually hear later in life. And there's been, like, studies proving this. Like there's there's a reason why everybody doesn't have perfect pitch. Oh, well, he would not understand that. But you just do it. He <laughs> having perfect pitch and perfect timbre, which is a relatively <laughs> rare thing in itself. But to have both, of course, together, that's yeah. Ingvar. Just like we can't play in his world. It's just mm -hmm. we don't know what it's like. But you're exactly right. I mean, you're exactly. It's just frequency. You know. Ah, uh, crazy. Can you hold this? Oh, this two. <laughs> two, <lines? laughs> two. Yeah. Oh, I could use a splash of that. Yeah. Um, but the beauty of this input output thing, uh -huh. it has to do also with sound and feeling and, you know, the softer mm -hmm. sides. It's just, um, 
being perfectly honest, yeah. there can be no misinterpretation, relatively mm-hmm. speaking. Mm-hmm. That's the same thing as input equals output. Mm-hmm. And, and Ingvar has taught me an enormous amount about just being honest because honesty sometimes just is so damn awkward or embarrassing or just wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's brutally honest. Yeah. Yeah. Painfully honest at times. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to take. Oh. But there's something you you can't you can't, you can't fight back at true yeah. no honesty because you, you, there would never be a reason for him to say oh you caught me in a mm-hmm. lie. He just doesn't think in those terms. Mm-hmm. It's just this is the way it is and mm-hmm. this is the way I'll tell it. Mm-hmm. And it's and it's also he's funny and super charming. That's yeah. the odd thing. The guy is just like freaky smart and you know like completely normal. Yeah. But his this is he's like an Elon Musk, mm-hmm. you know. It's just he's really Elon Musk is a con man though. <laughs> but man, it just I agree. How he's getting the money, complete con. And I'll tell you straight, start to finish. Oh yeah. But fuck that guy can design a complex mm-hmm. system. Oh yeah. And he's not doing it himself, man. It's just all delegation. That side of him, mm-hmm. I just I can't get enough. It's Supreme. Yeah. Like, uh, but is it just the sales shit he pulls off? It's just like, and next year we're going to quadruple the output of the battery, and we're going to run it on water and cotton. <laughs> <laughs> it, it just the stock shoots up twenty oh, percent. That is bottom of the no, Don't surface. you worry. We're, we're going to get into that later. Oh, but geez. I, I am super serious. Please, yeah. if, if you want money. I'll pay for it. <laughs> send, me, send me some speakers. Yeah. Hey, listen, I'll, I'll I, wait I, like three months to get them. No, I, we'll talk uh, actual models, mm-hmm. the, the whole thing. And, and it's not an issue at all to get them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and here's the fun thing. If things work out the way I'm planning, uh-huh. um, maybe in two, three years, the, the speaker you bought, say for 10 bucks mm-hmm. would now cost a thousand. Mm-hmm. And that feel good? Mm. Fuck <laughs> me, man. That's just like, I bought the first Tesla and <laughs> saved it in my garage. <laughs> it doesn't rust. There's yeah. n- it never moved. Mm. That kind of feeling mm. would be. So that's the goal. That's what mm. I'm, you know, that's my con. Right, look, you, you got me riled up. Uh, that's you my know. con. Well, um, okay, uh, what, what should we move on to? Cooper, you got something? What made you move to Sweden? Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Yeah, oh, uh, woman, mm. really? Oh. Last six weeks of uh, my senior year, just ran into this woman that I could not. It was just so exciting. I could not mm-hmm. keep up with. She just had so much difference, European, mm-hmm. and yeah, it's like I woke up to a different world. So mm-hmm. for six weeks, just. Poof, Wait, six weeks is all it took you to yeah. move to a different country? No, 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 no. Well, I visited that summer and, you know, dated the following year. This, okay. this is the funny shit you do in life. <laughs> I was fucking doing three jobs. Like, I was a, a morning lunch waiter yeah. and then lunch dinner waiter. And I also had like a weekend waiting job. So I worked yeah. seven days a week, three days, and I was going to school just so I could pay for you know, her senior year, part yeah. of it, you know, vacation stuff and all this mm-hmm. extra money, just nuts. So I was, it was very, it so she had you beyond with, oh, fuck man, just with me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't know what's going <laughs> I can tell you the funniest things. If I, I, I can say this, uh-huh. she will never fucking hear this. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not lying. Her father uh-huh. okay, said to me in front of her brother, and he reminded me of this like 30 years later, just fucking right to my face. Okay, we were engaged. Mm-hmm. And, and he says to me, and he says, Bill, uh, before you marry my daughter, I want you to know she's a pathological liar and she will destroy <laughs> the economy of any man she meets and marries. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Listen. Wow. Uh, uh, let me upgrade that. He's a fucking archbishop. It's a, oh, oh my God. My God. Yeah. Yo. And, and wait, can I just put that chair Go in ahead. there? You know what? I said, yeah, so what? <laughs> it's not going to marry her anyway. Wow. Yeah. Fuck me. Wow. Now, I'm not saying that she was did just the daddy scare tactic, wasn't it? Oh, fuck, man. But you know, I forgot about that completely. Uh-huh. 
And then, you know, I've had it rough with my ex. Did it all come to the fruition? No, my, 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 my stepbrother reminds me. He says, well, don't you remember <laughs> what my mm. father said to you before <laughs> you got married? Wow. Uh, and wow. It, you know what? I, I can say something really interesting. When I say pathological, pathological oh. lie, you're thinking yeah. like, oh, you know, like crazy, evil. Yeah. A pathological liar is someone that absolutely can convince themselves that mm -hmm. what they're saying is the truth. You can, to get that fact in their head, you have to stab them with a thousand knives. Mm -hmm. They just won't admit it to themselves. They've convinced so, themselves oh, it's the truth in so there. So real. Yep. And so, man, you know, you get the shit on the shit and it gets crazier and crazier. But it's not like some evil Marvel comic mm -hmm. dude, you know, that's just angry because his father beat him. You know, it, <laughs> you know, just, uh -huh. she just fucking believed everything she said. Yeah. Fuck. How do you compete with that? So what you're telling me is you got out conned. Oh, Ooh. fuck oh. me, man. <laughs> I have so disciplined <laughs> my Johnson. <laughs> he just gets slapped. It, 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 one of the reasons we didn't yeah. finally make it was because I just, I can't fucking just give in like some pussy. It's uh -huh. just like, you know, no, mm. I'm going to, I'm drawing the line here and I'm just mm. going to bitch. Okay, but no, that, that's the thing though. Like when you're like young like that, it's like there's the saying, you know, um, what is it like, uh, dumb and in love, something mm. like that. You know, it's very accurate oh. for one. Um, frontal lobe probably wasn't fully developed, uh, which is to say, uh, you were just making bad decisions all around, and you just didn't know it yet. Uh, and we don't know these things until later. Yeah, I, I, it, we, Will and I talked about this, and I said, Will, you can't say that because <laughs> yeah. John, you know, I am uh -huh. divorced, whatever, but I got yeah. the three most beautiful kids. Mm -hmm. you, you can't go back on this mm -hmm. shit. It's just yeah. that I did what I did. Yeah. She's the most amazing woman you could mm -hmm. possibly imagine mm -hmm. if you just wanted to be fucking exhausted and broke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean that Yo. I gave, you, you have to give Bill, it Bill, are you a stand-up comedian? <laughs> oh, no, no, but I'm desperate and poor. <laughs> Cause I, I think you got some material. <laughs> <laughs> you got that in common, right? <laughs> oh man, Jeez. yeah. But it, you stayed. You stayed in uh, Sweden. Yeah, well, that's the fucking thirty-seven thing, years, right? No, no. This is the, you bring them in, and they wear you down. Mm -hmm. it, it. There was never a moment when I didn't want to go home. And to this yeah. day, you know, it's like. But they wear you down where they just, mm -hmm. they give you a reason like, oh, you owe those taxes or, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't do this, then you're going to have to like. Uh, oh, the authorities. It, it's, it's, just, it's the little shit. You know, mm -hmm. oh, if you stay another year, you'll get your passport. Oh, I want to be a dual citizen. That's mm -hmm. worth like a year of my life in yeah. no sun. Just <laughs> fuck, man, the dark. <laughs> you guys have no idea what that yeah. means. <laughs> no idea because. If, I'm just fucking saying, if you leave behind a rock or a tree or a house, mm -hmm. and that you won't see that sun at all. You just what? see light in the air, no sun. What? Fucking six months, man. You're just what is the shortest day oh. in Sweden? Uh, well, you like know. how long? How many hours? See, that's the, 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 this is the, oh, it's so painful because if I give you the numbers, you're gonna say, oh yeah, dude, you are a pussy because we do, we just we <laughs> two hours difference. <laughs> No, well, no, the better question is how much daylight do you get? No, no, it's the same, like the same question. Wait, wait, wait. This is what I'm saying. You guys don't hear me. Uh -huh. It's light outside, okay? Uh -huh. But it, that's not seeing the sun. Uh -huh. it, it, it's, it's just peeking out. No, the sun is there. You know it for that brief period of time during the day. And then it's down, and it's, but it's not down. It's still light. The, the point is you're just so unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> so profoundly yeah. unhappy and there's not enough light practically for the rest of the year to make up for that shit. <laughs> Fuck, man. These people don't talk to mm -hmm. each other. I'm literally, I'm telling you, in an apartment house, you know, you got 10 apartments mm -hmm. that share an elevator. Yeah. You Something fucking don't even know their year, names. Like. Really? No, because they don't talk. I thought, like, I, I feel like everything I heard about Sweden is like a misconception Yeah, now. that's summertime Swedes. See, then they leave, they go to their lake homes, uh -huh. and they all talk amongst themselves. Oh, all so summer long. they're legitimately just depressed oh, during yeah. the winter. Yeah. They invented <laughs> manic. You know, it's just like, <laughs> ah! <laughs> wow. I just listen, my, my first year in Sweden, yeah. I swear to God, I was in the southern part of Sweden 
it like rains every day and it's cloudy. That's add that to that mm-hmm. clouds in the winter. So it's <laughs> light during the day and there's a the sun cloudy. up there. But if you don't see that sun, I remember the longest time was mm-hmm. like 143 days with no sun <laughs> visible through the clouds. So imagine this. This is you want to hear something mm-hmm. fucking weird. I'm like alone in this huge apartment yeah. with no furniture. Yeah. Walking <laughs> around in the dark. And every I got to know a guy across, this little boy across the way. I was a, a, a grad student. Mm-hmm. And every single day we'd look at each other because I, I wasn't studying yet. I didn't know Swedish. Mm-hmm. And and this kid and I were just depressed together. (laughs) I can't. I can't communicate. I'm just just looking at him (laughs) naked, just fucking starving, smoking. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds like a sad French movie. (laughs) Just black and white. (laughs) I'm not even drinking whiskey. It's like hard coffee. (laughs) Like the fourth cup. Uh, You just fucking (laughs) shake it in front of that kid. Be happy. (laughs) Okay, you know, now now I have a theory because I feel like, you know, you know, the whole like saying like you you have to be like uh, sad in order to like experience like true happiness. Yeah. yeah. You know, maybe that's what it is where I hear like the, ah, Sweden, everything's great in Sweden, you know, because they experience all of this like literal doom and gloom. And then, you know, they have all that sunshine. (laughs) Everything's great. Everything's happy. They're so afraid you would never listen or visit them if they stop smiling. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, welcome to Sweden. (laughs) So so fucking depressed. Wow. Hey, I'm telling you, man. So all of these stories you talked about, that's in the southern part of sweden yeah what's it like in the north of sweden hey listen listen you want to know ask the eskimos in alaska that's where the swedes <laughs> live it's the that's fucking the, the prevailing westerlies warm up europe we are so fucking far up alaska's ass yeah. and we're just sharing that's my life you guys feel sorry for some guy who just like oh yeah we have sun all summer and it's dark all winter that's my fucking everyday life and I'm doing it in a suit. Just <laughs> fuck. Yeah. Not That's how. F- not an Eskimo. <laughs> I'm telling Yeesh. you, man. Oh, but he's talking the northern part of Sweden. You know what? You want to know what are the funnest things these health freaks do? They go up to the north and there's like a little teeny circle. It's like, you know what? Yeah. 10 meters around or something. Mm-hmm. Because you go through Norway, Finland, and Sweden. And, you know, it's at the fucking North Pole. <laughs> Are you above the, are you in the Arctic Circle? At the that northern point? part of Sweden is the fucking Arctic Circle. I mean, just, yeah. That's where we tow in with the rest of the freezies. Yeah. Jeez. Wow. The Swedes, this is what I'm telling you, the Swedes are a bizarre people. Are there any other, like, common, like, misconceptions or mm-hmm. stereotypes that you could clear up? Yeah, no. This is, I'll tell you something that just fucking freaks me out. Yeah. I just look, they're just regular people, okay? Some of them are pretty tall. Uh-huh. Okay. Let's just grant them the fantasy, you know, not that Greeks actually had blonde hair back then, but let's uh-huh. pretend they did. So you give them the blonde hair and the blue eyes, you know, and just let's say that they, they're lumberjacks and they fish a lot. So, uh-huh. you know, they're tall and they're strong. Sure. But just talk sports, you know. Hockey is a natural thing for Swedes to play. Sure. World champions. And some of the best players mm-hmm. ever to play in the NHL. Yeah, if you oh, take yeah. race car driving, Formula One or IndyCar, mm-hmm. they've got it there. And then, then you got to go fucking weird. Ping pong. Best ping pong players in the history of table tennis. Not the Chinese. It's a couple of Swedes. Wow. Rally car. Um <sighs> Swimming, sprinting, running, well, okay. high jumping. I'm, I'm gonna pause you really quick. Yeah. How the hell are they getting like all these people that want to achieve things and do things and like make do things that make them happy when nobody's happy? <laughs> because they're so afraid, no one's gonna see or listen to them. So they, <laughs> they gotta have, the have to be the very best in the world. Bjorn Borg. I'm sure the only reason he played tennis is because he just felt so alone in the world. Wow. <laughs> you know, he just oh fucking God. hit that barn door and then, hey, okay, five Wimbledons, I'll do it. 
Jeez. I'll do no. anything to just stay alive in this dark, <laughs> dark country. Yeah. Do, do you do you watch? Do you follow F one at all? Like, what do you think? If, if I, oh, yeah, I, I do, but it's only by default. That's you know the guy that I do the speakers with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, there's two. I, he has two interests: making the finest, you know, <laughs> in the world, and motorcycles and all mm. engines. Yeah. Mm. So he's interested. I got interested. So yeah, I actually follow it really closely, and I still can't get over last season, man. I'm so fucking angry. Really? Oh fuck. Okay. You know, since when? Let's just let the six drivers between, you know, there's no lapped cars, you know, when the at the lap the last lap in the last race. I, I you know what I'm yes, talking about. Yes. Hamilton is the greatest driver ever, maybe. And there's just brilliant new drivers. Uh, and they're just mm-hmm. absolutely in one to one competition all year long. And the last race, there's an accident. So the last lap just was, it was, yeah. it was wrong. Toto is called the motor race. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, yeah. Listen, you want to know what I do almost every Friday with this Ingvar guy and a bunch of other, you know, these engineer nerds. We watch, it's called Motor Film Friday. So mm-hmm. we go out to dinner yep. and we eat and then we come back to Ingvar's house and he's got the, you know, the most chaotic pigsty of a <laughs> home theater but it's yeah. got the best sound probably in the world yeah. and, that's all you need too. Yeah. Good sound. and we watch uh, it's it, we watch a motor film and that's defined as it has to be a car or a motorcycle mm-hmm. for part of the film mm-hmm. you know and, and we stretch that but we, man, we watch a lot of shitty like actual motor based films where the carburetor in 1960 <laughs> 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 these guys are all just going oh, oh my god <laughs> I know the serial numbers on that <laughs> Not seen this on the ten days. <laughs> wow. um, so it, Formula One, hell yeah! If for people in America, that is in the in the, um, in in Europe, mm-hmm. in different cars, different rules, and mm-hmm. by far different tracks. Yes, Formula One is just no. But sport. like going back to the top of like the topic of Swedes, not that he's a Swede, but like, uh, have you heard of like Max Verstappen's like how he became the youngest driver ever? No, I mean, apart from that, his dad. Yeah, like, his dad used to, like, I mean, Netherlands is kind of in the same region. Uh Like, you don't get any sunlight. Uh Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, His dad used to, like, take him out in the middle of winter. It doesn't (laughs) matter what time. Just take him out. The the tracks are icy as fuck. Because there is snow everywhere. And it would just be like, yeah, set your best time. Yeah. If you don't break it, you just well, yeah. it's just like, we will break you, yeah. son. Yeah. It's, like, that kid, like, that, like, eight year old kid was setting, like, lap records on, like, these n- n- Netherlands tracks. And, like, uh. it's crazy in the snow, just slipping yeah. everywhere. You guys have probably have Ingvar Stan Mark. He was a skier. Considered one of the great sque- skiers of all time. But he was a Swede. So he was the Bjorn Borg or the, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Tiger Woods of, you know, skiing, downhill, slalom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, when they compared his training regimen to, like, other skiers. This guy, like, way before. He was, like, lift boulders. In his hands <laughs> and hop uphill from boulder to boulder. Like and and not just like okay, I'm gonna do this three times today. Yeah. He'd fucking do that like before he went to work. <laughs> <laughs> was someone it. making him do that? No. That was and, his and, regimen. Yeah. The guy's really bright. Yeah. And the thing is, he's still that strong practically today. And he's you know, he they do these little drama series that you yeah. have, you know, like what do you call it? The guy who can survive the longest. On an island, you know. Oh, oh uh, Survivor? Survivor? Yeah, that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, You know. He participates in those when they do the celebrity ones. And he ah. fucking crushes all <laughs> resistance. Yeah. It's just, just random thing. Hop in a pool. You hold on to a weight. And how long can you hold your breath? Your breath? Yeah. yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, I can do that for 37 <laughs> seconds. And then you know, you hear some guy just super trained in the, in the same group. And they're going, I can do it for a minute and 60 seconds. You know. That fucker goes in there six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait, 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 wait. He was holding Fuck his breath no. for oh six God. minutes. Fuck. 
it, it, it didn't even like wiggle. Just <laughs> <laughs> and when he got up, he's, and then he starts running to Lexus. <laughs> Like the guy's super fucking. How can human. you run after holding your breath for six minutes? <laughs> like, you, just, are, you just do. <laughs> you just, great, great I'll tell you. Oxygen, oxygen conversion. Like, just, great. just take away the sun from your life. <laughs> you know, just eight you eight will years. become superhuman. <laughs> Either that so. or the others are going to eat you alive. <laughs> Yo, wow. that's that's different. That's yeah. that's different. And you know what? It only works if you're born there because I've been living there yeah. longer than I've been living here, uh-huh. and I'm just a fucking pussy. <laughs> <laughs> no fucking chance. But you stay. You stay there though. It's, but that's the thing. You get addicted to trying. It's like if I just ate a little more protein <laughs> and slept another thirty-seven minutes every day. On average, <laughs> over time, fuck, I want to stay mm. to try. Mm. That's what it is. Mm. You just get it. Okay, no, I, I get that though. You know, you're just you're not a quitter. You, we we don't have that mentality here. We don't have the quitting mentality. This oh. is not that podcast. No, 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 no. Fuck me. I'm from Minnesota, and they're uh-huh. from the Swedes, kind of thing. Yeah, it's like Minnesotans are so st- just not stupid, but so satisfied by the fatness of their lives. You know, they're just like mm-hmm. dumb happy. Oh, yeah. You know, like, oh, I won't steal that because that would be wrong. You know, they're not mm-hmm. thinking like, I would steal that if I was starving and yeah. it was either that guy or me. Yeah. Minnesotans don't ever get that far. No, not really. There's fucking no, there's no black and white. Everything is gray and we'll talk about it tomorrow. And, and we're all happy in that way. Mm-hmm. And, and that, that the Talking thing is, that, no, but that is what happens when you're lazy and fat because you got all that new sun because you took that boat <laughs> yeah. from fucking Sweden and now you're just blasting in all yeah. that shit. So Every just day wait. is sunbathing. So, like. so that's me, okay? Mm-hmm. Plus a couple generations. Yeah. They don't even remember the port and you know, the no light. And then I go back there. So my genes are completely used to darkness and depression. <laughs> But I thought life was fun and exciting. So I'm there just just like, I'm melting. <laughs> you lose your humor. You lose your wit. You know, you're speaking this language and you feel stupid and tired. And it's all oh because God. they took away the sun. And you get pale. And you fucking start thinking about vampires and shit. Just gonna. Ah. Dude, you're describing Sweden as a hell city. <laughs> we in in America, we hear of Sweden as like it's either one yeah. side of the argument is it's a socialist nightmare. The other side is you get free healthcare and it's a beautiful place. Okay, the world champion <laughs> female arm wrestler came from Sweden, the mm-hmm. northern part, and the name of her fucking 10-person village was Hell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not shitting you. But they, had, they had a documentary on this woman, yeah. and they said, like, how do you train? She's in a fucking barn made out of wood from the 17th century, mm-hmm. and she's got, like, hanging from ropes and shit. Total primitive. Yeah. Just fucking, like, a rope and some iron thing in the ceiling. Mm. And her arms were just fucking <laughs> three trucks. Well, she was the best yeah. in the world. And you know what? She just never fucking saw the sun. <laughs> and someone said to her, if you let go of those ropes, uh, you're going to die. Okay. So, <laughs> so like you will fall into Swedish hell. People like like they have like is, is that the um part of the world that like um Vikings hail from and stuff? Or like that area, or is that and, part of it? Hey, listen, it's it's really cool. So uh-huh. the the Scandinavian word for knife is knive. Mm-hmm. You know that's where knife comes from. Mm-hmm. You know because oh, we were pronouncing it wrong. No, no, no. This is or you know uh, the word for window uh-huh. comes from the uh, you know Scandinavian word for uh-huh. uh, eye hole in the sky. So mm-hmm. it's vindaga. It became window. Mm-hmm. There, there's so many shared things, and here's the great thing. Yeah, the only reason for that. <laughs> Is the Vikings fucking, and this is the truth, uh-huh. went down there and raped and pillaged <laughs> and fucking just went back home. <laughs> they just, that was summertime, man. Uh-huh. They had to get home for the winter. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God.
Because I, I, I just had to make sure, like, is this like, is, is this like the culture just to like, you know, be like just <laughs> supreme <laughs> beings because of your absolute uh, sadness? But only the ones that get out of the caves. Uh, That's the thing. It, it's just these, they're so afraid. There's nothing. They're just, their life is basically yeah. suicide, <laughs> but you got to wait to die kind of thing. You know? <laughs> But you know, again, the- you you're saying all this, and I'm like, just in my brain, I'm just like going, and he's still there. He's still there. He stays. Because they they tell me if like if I'm there, I'm gonna get thirty second black belt in fucking trying. I mean, how good is that? I say to myself, it's like, I've already got twenty seven. I just fuck. There's barely room on my shirt. I mean. That you just, how can you give up? Uh-huh. What would you say to yourself if you've got 37 just going down the sleeve? And you just say to yourself, you could give up. You could go back home to America where you just, you, there's the sun time, shines bright. The time, there's time for TV. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to say this. I truly believe you are a different breed because, like, I already want to kill myself during these Ooh. winters. Yeah. And, like, you're talking about, like, the, I, I I could not. I I because I've always wanted to visit. I've always wanted no, to visit Sweden. I, I think but it's I do like. I don't think I could live there because they were born there. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know I was not born there. I had a child there. Okay, my friend from my high school and college came from my country to visit me in Sweden, and I had a baby. And this is to me. This is just the, this is a perfectly normal thing now in my mm-hmm. every single day. I took my baby, firstborn, didn't know shit, Mm -hmm. put it in that baby carriage with some blankets, and I put him out in the balcony. This is the middle of the winter. It's fucking freezing. (laughs) And then my friend John says, Bill, what the fuck are you doing, man? The police are going to, you can't just put your baby out in the freezing weather. (laughs) And and I said to them, I said, no, we're hardening. (laughs) (laughs) And that's the sweetest fucking word. I swear to God, my friend looks at me, he just goes like... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what do you say? Run, baby, run! <laughs> and listen, and, and you think this shit is just, it's not just sports? I, listen to this, man. I, we sent my Swedish wife and me, we sent my old same kid that we were hugging, <laughs> fucking like minus 20, up like for a half hour, that same kid, we sent home from Sweden to Minneapolis alone at six years old. <laughs> <laughs> it's no, listen, we dropped him down in the gate and, you know, he's in the seat. Yeah. Uh, Mr. And Mrs. Dorsey, would you please come to flight desk? Da, 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 da. <laughs> and we go there and they say, your child is in the front seat and he's crying. <laughs> 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 so I confer with my fucking Viking wife and she goes, I'll do this. And she goes down there. She just walks right up to my fucking firstborn and says, Okay, if you're gonna sit here and cry, you can't go. If you wanna stay home, you can cry all you want, but you're not going to America. You can just go <laughs> fucking flew alone. That little teeny Viking, six years old. <laughs> Christ, how the fuck? And no, we're not talking like you know, people are there to help you because you're divorced no and that shit. Mm-hmm. This time. No, no, we just sent them there. Damn, my grandparents pick them up, they don't even recognize them. They're just, just coming boy. out of the plane all alone, six years old, looking for grandpa and grandpa he's never met. You know, just <laughs> ah! <laughs> fuck, can you believe that shit? And I didn't even feel shame. I thought this. This is what you do as a good parent. Hard- it's hardening. <laughs> <laughs> I harden. <laughs> you know, that's like, you know, like, just, what do you, what, what is it? It's karate, but, you know, from Thailand. Thai kicking. Yeah. You know, and you just go in and you look at actual videos and they sit there and they kick fucking trees until their legs have no feeling. Uh. I was doing that to my own son, but I didn't know it. <laughs> so I told my good friend that I'm hardening the child. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. You, yeah, no. 
They're a, dif- the they're a different breed over there. <laughs> certainly cannot get away with stuff like that in the U.S. And, no. and, and I tell you, they don't accept me for 30 seconds. I am white, <laughs> Scandinavian background, speak the language 35 years, married, children, and you you're know, still working. A foreigner. I can't even just fart and they'll say, oh, where do you come from? Wait, Walla, what? <laughs> oh, yeah. Man, I just well, get so so you still it. have an accent, then, is what you're saying. It doesn't. Like, I said if I fart, they'll just say it. Just they're so sensitive, you know, because they're in the dark and they're by themselves. <laughs> no they're fuck, looking. no. Listen, listen. <laughs> they're you <know>, echolocation. <laughs> Not the right if you don't fucking know who's good and bad in the dark, you're already dead. <laughs> so you don't even get to come out of the cave. Okay, that's how they know that I, shit. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Fuck me up. I'm telling you, I'm constantly escaping from vampires. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. I do. I I believe it. But you know, with the vampires. Some of them you really can't tell if they're this or that because I don't have that like hypersensitive smell. Shit. Uh-huh. I'm just like a regular guy that's got to be <laughs> mm-hmm. a vampire. You know, know what? That. I'm surprised you survived this long. <laughs> that's just the start, man. <laughs> what do you mean that's the start? <laughs> I started breathing. <laughs> yeah, you were you, you passing that hybrid. shit up. Oh, oh my man. god. <gasps> yeah. We didn't get past Sweden. And by the way, it is the perfect place to raise your children. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no guns. Mm-hmm. There's no basically nothing that can You can just let your kid it. run around, right? And it's just, you it's don't, you're perfect. Your kid's not going to be. Kidnapped. If the kid's hearted. <laughs> <laughs> The, the other parents just don't care because the ones that are alone are going to die. <laughs> <laughs> the ones that are alone are oh, going to die. die. <laughs> like, how, what's the infant it's mortality just, rate just, like? <laughs> no, it, it's actually super low. It's weird how this kind of stuff works genetically and evolutionarily because, you know, the ones that are able to survive the darkness, the deprivation and calories and, and you know, just basic photosynthesis. <laughs> Survive the caves where you can only smell each other. And you have to <laughs> kill each other based on smell. Okay? Fuck. So, can you imagine whether or not they value their children? Those are, like, so valuable. It's just, like, fucking, they build what groups. Are you? Are you come up? Yeah, yeah. What was that? Someone's asking a question for Will. Yeah. Oh, was I being too loud? Uh, I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, when uh, Cooper gets back, we're gonna move into our segment "Money Moves," <laughs> and uh, we'll get that for I'll the shut week. up. No, no, no. Th- this has been great. This is like you, you've like told me why I should never go to Sweden, you know, and I'll, and I'll take that advice to heart. You know, just don't don't get stuck there. <laughs> you can go. go. You can visit. Go on vacation. <laughs> it takes a long time before it just infects your blood <laughs> you know how long it takes you you know you, in all these films vampires uh-huh. one bite oh i'm a fucking vampire not true mm-hmm. in reality it yeah. takes thousands <laughs> just snacks at noon anytime you feel just you get those eyes closed on the train you just get that quick one there mm-hmm. yeah fucking 10 years of that shit no. and you are a vampire mm-hmm. Get you can't. You, did, you don't get to ask yourself when you're a vampire, like, oh, I mm-hmm. wonder what it would feel like to be able to walk around in sunlight. Mm-hmm. Doesn't exist because that's what you understand. If you have a kid at that state, you're never going to let it go. Yeah. Uh-huh. Full protection. So it's totally normal that they are procreating and surviving. Are we okay. being too loud? Yeah, we're going to have to wind it down here. Okay. All right. Okay. My Which question. is fine. Yeah. Okay. So I have, I have one last question. Right? Uh-huh. Like for me as a Minnesotan, I still use Celsius because I I learned it yeah. when I was younger. Negative yeah. ten is like okay. Th- th- this is like good enough temperature. Like I am happy with this temperature. <laughs> what is that temperature for you? Ah, this is the weirdest thing. Swedes say I I say zero. Okay, that's thirty two degrees. Yeah. And to me, zero has nothing to do with anything. It's just a number in my world. Now that makes it that doesn't make any sense, you know, practically or mathematically. But for me, zero mm-hmm. is way, way down into cold land. You know, really, 
it's 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 Fahrenheit. Oh, 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 see yeah. What I mean? Okay. So it just I don't see. So do you still use Fahrenheit? I in my head when it comes to the cold, yes. Okay. Celsius is perfect, but it's it's really general. I mean, you know what? It's it's uh, twice as large in scale as as Fahrenheit, a little bit more. Yes. So that you know, twenty to twenty-one degrees is quite a bit, mm -hmm. but ninety to ninety-one degrees is you know you, don't, you can't even really measure it. So now, when it gets when it, when it when it gets real, Fahrenheit. If I'm just trying to be that Euro kind of. Mm -hmm. Not yeah, metrosexual. When I'm feeling that, <laughs> then, I go, then I go metric. You know, it just it just like matches my clothes. Mm -hmm. But if it's if I can count, if someone's saying you know this is what the temperature will be minus thirty eight, I'm not going to be. I, I want that really thick down, you know, and then I want to know in Fahrenheit because what the fuck you know Celsius, it's the same. Yeah, it's not as real. Mm -hmm. no. Okay. All right. So we'll move on to our final segment and wrap this up. Um, and also, before we start that, Bill, if you would like your mic stand to uh, stand where you want it to, uh, just like tighten the knob that's at like the ba the base <laughs> at the top over there, and it'll stay. Yeah. No. Oh, let's listen. Line this down. Listen. I, I I'm gonna be oh, honest. Like done. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I got you. Well, it, it, unfortunately. I, we have I, no time for money. I moves. can't twist it further and harder. Yeah, it's it. It does get pretty stiff. See, I'm 59. I know this. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, fuck. There's nothing you can do, man. Mm. I just keep twisting and twisting. It's just going not open. <laughs> Unfortunate. And there it goes. Well, okay. So, Bill, thank you very much yeah, for joining us. Like it has been an rush. absolute an pleasure. Awesome episode. Yeah. Um, I think. Uh, Everybody's gonna enjoy it. This was a lot of fun, uh, and uh huh. I, I got to do what do you call it when you give someone a promotion? A sound off. Um, sound out. Sound out. Sure. Shout out. Shout, Shout out. out. Yeah, there yeah, you yeah. Go. That little old school <laughs> here. Um, before we started, yeah, we were just talking about podcasting, mm -hmm. and my son does a podcast called Twentieth Century Freak, and he had some kind of influence, a little bit of just that happened. Mm -hmm. I think that's really cool. Random connection. And I mean, my son in Sweden does his podcast and mm -hmm. then probably through Will. Um, a little bit of an influential thing there. Um, definitely. Definitely. Um, I just go, wait, I got to do one more thing, man. Mm -hmm. Ed Bart. And it's like this guy I'm talking, my second son, goes to St. Olaf. Okay. Four years. And that's just a fucking boatload of money, man. Oh my God. Yeah. In, in, Sweden college is free, yeah. so it's a major fucking decision. And after his senior year, I came for his graduation. We're having this walk, and uh, I says, "What are you? What are you going to be?" That kind of bullshit thing that dads do. And he said, "Well," <laughs> he said, "I'm going to start a podcast." <laughs> and I said, well, "What's that?" And he goes. You know, it's like on the internet. <laughs> so, well, like, what do you mean? Like a database? <laughs> oh, goes, no. No, I'm going to talk on the internet. And then he says, do you know who Joe Rogan is? And I said, no. <laughs> so, you know, that whole fucking thing just mm -hmm. missed no back. Pencil. And I just went there and just said, fuck. Okay, I studied philosophy, oh. classical languages. Religion? I mean... I, <sighs> I bet you regretted all that money after that, huh? No, no, I just absolutely love it. But then now my son's saying he's gonna what? He's gonna talk uh -huh. and record it and put it on the net. Yeah. And I thought you fucking fool. <laughs> <laughs> and here God damn are. it! You are. Ne it's not. I wasn't saying you're never gonna succeed. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying you're gonna die next winter. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me, man. <laughs> Wasn't hearted enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You didn't leave him out in the cold enough. <laughs> I, oh. I, you know, God bless his soul. He stuck it out and he's doing mm -hmm. other stuff and, and mm -hmm. he's so happy and where he wants mm -hmm. to be. I, I can say, okay, we just can round it off because this has mm -hmm. been mm -hmm. a lot of me talking. I just had my. Uh, Side note 59th birthday. Yeah. You should tell him to tell us how to make money. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, and my kids went around, and they, you know, they all wanted to say something nice uh-huh. on my birthday. Well, you know, that's just such a. But every single kid said, "Dad, I'm so happy because, um, I'm so paranoid and afraid, and I second guess things, and I don't trust anyone, and not even what I read." <laughs> <laughs> And we're so happy you made us this way. <laughs> we're so much the better for it. <laughs> Honest to God, to a man. Mm-hmm. They all three said it. Mm-hmm. I'm just going like, do you guys just not understand? It's about the fucking sun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Something else. Oh, you're- so you're saying you would have gotten an entirely different response if it was were in winter? Fuck, <laughs> man. They would have just eaten me up. <laughs> Cheaper protein. <laughs> oh. Oh, fuck. Someone's paying the price upstairs here. Oh, I feel, you have to apologize tomorrow. Yeah. Tell them I'm not normally like this. I just from Sweden. <laughs> oh, like, yeah, those those goddamn Swedes. Um, but yes, again, absolute pleasure. Uh, so much to be learned. We gotta do um, this again. Yeah, well, I mean, hey, let us know. When you're coming Next back, we'll, we'll be in Sweden for this. Hey, that, and we can also do the tuck. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, tick doing tuck. T- 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 I don't know. Internet. Oh, you mean like, uh, <laughs> yeah, gonna, like, um, fucking zoom. do this. Yeah, over zoom the internet interview. and yeah, yeah, record yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I, I get what you're getting at. Um, <laughs> what do you call it? Skype. Yeah, yeah. yeah zooming yeah. or Skyping or whatever. Just a video uh, well, interview. I could just be on a giant mm. screen in the back. <laughs> hey, we, we don't got that kind of money. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd be Big Brother. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Okay. And all right. So yeah. Um thanks for showing up. Mm. We'll see you guys next week. As Goodbye. Always, live and learn. Live and learn. <laughs>